Our scripture lesson today is another psalm, this time because it's part of the Sunday school curriculum for the summer. Hear now from Psalm 106. Praise the Lord, O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty things of the Lord or declare all God's praise? Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you that you are good to us, even in all sorts of circumstances and all sorts of situations. You are good. Open our hearts and minds that we might hear that word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the kids have had five lessons this summer from a vacation Bible school curriculum, and they all end, God is good. So I'm going to say the lesson, and you're going to say, God is good. Okay, got it? All right. When life is unfair, God is good. when life is scary, God is good. when life changes, God is good. when life is sad, God is good. when life is good, yeah, you guys are good. No matter what, God is good. Psalm 106 is about to list the sins of Israel that sends them into exile. God is good. No matter what the exterior circumstances are, in secular society in America is just learning this through the practice of mindfulness, which is a helpful practice of developing the inner observer that watches one's experiences and emotions go by as if they're clouds in the sky. The meditation develops our ability to separate what is going on in the world with the truth that we can always be one with ourselves and the world. Meditation that I believe quiets our hearts and minds and brings us to the feet of Jesus. It's a practical tool that can remind us that when life is unfair and scary and changes and is sad or good, that God is good. The first theme is, and now you know your part, when life is unfair... When the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, their work was hard and unfair and made harder for no reason. The people were beaten down and desperate and they didn't know what to do. They cried out to the Lord and God heard their cry. God was with them. God gave them the strength to do every day, even when they thought they couldn't do it anymore. God was their comfort and their hope. It turns out God made a way, a very dramatic way, for them to leave the land of Egypt where they were being tortured. But even before then, God was with them. Because when life is unfair, and wow, can we resonate with life being unfair. It can seem that when we work really hard, someone else can get the credit. When we put in years of effort and compassion, it can be gone in a second of greed or death. When we give it all that we have, sometimes it's just not enough. And yet, all while life is unfair on the surface, we have to remind ourselves and one another that God is always working for the good of those who love the Lord. God is always at work doing good and justice, bringing about peace and hope and love. And we have to remember that when life is shifting this way and that, when the chips are not falling our way, God is bringing about new creation where all experience equality and equity. When life is unfair, our second theme is, and you still have your part, when life is scary, the Israelites were so scared in the land of Egypt, they were being so pressed down that, that though soon they would be, they thought they would soon be dead of exhaustion and their people would be no more. In the midst of their pain and their suffering, God was there. God was there comforting and providing a way for them to continue even in deep grief and pain. And then... God did something no one expected. God sent plagues that made it so they could walk right out of that disaster and abuse. 
When life is scary, and we can resonate here as well. Probably every one of us have experienced grief in different ways, of course, and it is scary. Those are the moments when we're so scared by life that we're not sure we can go on, not sure that what is left will be good enough. Dear to the church is Psalm 23 that reminds us over and over again, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Even when life scares the hope right out of us, God is present to love us back into right relationship with ourselves and the beauty and wonder of this world. And even when we least expect it and think it will never happen, God opens doors and provides a way toward healing we thought was impossible. When life is scary, and the third theme, when life changes, and oh, we do not like change, good, bad, or otherwise. When the Israelites were delivered out of the land of Egypt, they end up wandering to the de- through the desert for decades, and they start to forget how bad it was as slaves in Egypt, and they begin to complain and grumble and ask to go back. God, of course, knows what is best and does not react to their prayers in that way. We have to remind ourselves, when life changes, Psalm 106 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. And we do not like change. It kind of messes with us. We would rather stay in a known, mediocre job than take a new job that has great possibilities. Our tendency is to stay in a rotten friendship rather than spend the time developing new ones. And yet we have to remind ourselves that when life goes this way or that, God is a constant source of strength and peace leading us towards what is good and holy and just. The third lesson, when life changes, on to the fourth lesson, when life is sad, Psalm 34 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. God knows sadness. God gave his only begotten son to a bunch of people who didn't recognize him and put him to death on a cross. God knows sadness. God knows our trouble. God can empathize with our hurt and our pain. And God raises Jesus from the dead. So too can God raise us out of our sorrow and heartache. When life is sad, and our final lesson, when life is good, When things are really going well for the Israelites, after they had crossed into the promised land, they built a memorial to remember God's goodness. After 40 years in the wilderness, Joshua was now leading the people, and they come to the Jordan River. The river stops upstream, and the people, led by the the priests and the ark, or the presence of God, cross over on dry land, just as they had done through the Red Sea when they left Egypt. But before they all cross through, Joshua tells the 12 tribes of Israel to take a rock from the dry riverbed. And after they had crossed over, they take the 12 rocks and they make a memorial to remember what God has done for them. Joshua says, when your children ask what these stones are for, remind them that God brought us here and that God is good. Because when life is good... Sometimes it is hardest to remember that we rely on the grace and strength of God when everything's good. We forget why things are good. We forget to thank God and we take for granted all the things that we have and all that blesses our lives. We need tangible things to remind us that God has and does bless us and that the blessings of our lives are not of our own making. I have a couple of friends who keep blessing boards. Every time they recognize a blessing from the Lord, they write it down and pin it up, big or small. They pin it right to that board. So that when things are going well or terrible, they can look at the visible memorial to the greatness of God and the blessing of their lives. 
We do need physical reminders to thank the Lord and to praise God that God is good. Because when life is good, So today, let us learn with our children that no matter what is happening, God is present and active in our lives, in our community, in the places and situations that scare us, the ones that break our hearts, and that God is leading us towards greater happiness and wholeness, even when life is good. So let's do the rundown one more time. When life is unfair, when life is scary, when life changes, When life is sad, when life is good, God is good. Amen. My Lord. What a morning, my Lord, what a morning, oh, my Lord, what a morning, when the stars begin to fall. My Lord, what a morning, my Lord, what a morning, oh my Lord, what a morning, when the stars begin to fall when the stars begin to fall you'll hear the trumpet sound to wake the nations underground looking to my God's right hand when the stars begin to fall you'll hear the sinners cry to wake the nations underground looking to my God's right hand when the stars begin to fall you will hear the Christians shout to wake the nations underground looking to my God's right hand when the stars begin to fall my Lord what a morning my lord what a morning oh my lord what a morning when the stars begin to fall when the stars begin to fall.